To simplify the algebra a bit, I'm calling one side of this rectangle 2L and the other side 2K. Of course, I could have just said this is L and this is K. Um, then this point here would be L over 2. And this point here would be minus L over 2. Okay, so I'm setting the rectangle in a coordinate system where the center of mass is at the origin. But, you know, the algebra would just be a little bit more awkward. We just have all these messy fractions. So by calling the sides 2K and 2L, it simplifies things a little bit. But of course it doesn't matter as long as the two sides are different. You see, L is different from K, so once the two sides are different, um, we can describe any rectangle using this notation. Now we have a uniform rectangle here, so the uh, mass is uniformly spread throughout its area. Now we are going to get the moment of inertia of this rectangle about the y-axis to begin with. Okay, so that will involve taking mass elements at a distance x from the y-axis. Now we could have chosen our mass elements to be tiny little rectangles like this, but it's convenient to make our mass elements have one side equal to the side of this rectangle. We can make our mass element vanishingly small by making the width of the element delta x approach zero. By the way, uh, this is a lowercase delta in the Greek alphabet. Um, you know, in other videos I've used the uppercase delta, so maybe I'll just go back to using uppercase delta. So, um, we would have to take, to get the moment of inertia of this mass element about the y-axis, we would have to take this mass, delta m, multiplied by x squared, and that will give us the approximate moment of inertia, because you see x measures to the left side of this strip, so it's a little bit ambiguous. Where should x be? Should we measure to the middle or to the other side, you know? It's only when we take limits as delta m approaches zero that measuring x to the left-hand side is good enough, because when delta m approaches zero, the width of this strip will approach zero. So we keep x fixed, but, you know, the width would close in, so our strip would become infinitely narrow. And the distance of this, it, it would effectively become a line when we take the limit as delta m approaches zero. Okay, so we will be taking this limit here, and we know what happens from there, but okay, we're just, this, is, this is just one particular strip, of course. We have to do that for all of the strips and sum, sum these quantities. Now we want all of this thing here to involve x, of course. See, we have two different variables, m and x, as things stand. So we use the fact that the um, rectangle is uniform to bring in the notion of the mass per unit area of the disk, okay, or of the rectangle. Its thickness is negligible, it's just a lamina. So mass depends on area. Mass is proportional to area. So if we double the area of any region, we double the mass, and so on. Okay, so that's the idea. So we have the notion of the mass of a unit area. So rho would have units of kilograms per meter squared this time. So rows is the mass in kilograms of one square meter. Um, all those square meters have the same mass, or indeed if we take any unit, it doesn't have to be a square meter, its mass will be the same as another unit of the same area. Okay, so let's get rho in terms of the mass of the rectangle and the sides of the rectangle. So the mass, let's say, is big M, or we can just say M. And we divide by the area, we'll, we just multiply the two sides together. So we don't ha to get rho, we don't have to take the entire mass, we can take the mass of our strip, which is delta M, and divide by the area of the strip. Well, the strip is in the shape of a rectangle, its width is delta x, its height is the side of this rectangle, 2k. So it's 2k delta x. So now you, you see we can write delta m as um, 
um, mass per unit area times area, or we can call the mass per unit area the density. It's an area density. Okay, so that's what we plug in for delta m. So now our moment of area, or, or sorry, our moment of inertia of this strip about the y-axis just involves x x's. Rho is just a constant, k is just a constant. So here it is. So I'm writing it down here. The moment of inertia of the strip about the y-axis. And um, of course we know what we have to do. We have to take, to get the moment of inertia about the y-axis, we have to take the sum of all of these. Okay, we have to sum over all these strips running from minus L to plus L. Now more accurately I should say this is approximately the moment of inertia but the y-axis is, appro is approximately given by this. We have to take limits to get the exact moment of inertia. So if we take the limit as delta x approaches zero, so now the strip becomes infinitely thin and we don't have to worry about the distance of the strip to the y-axis. You know, we don't have to say is it from the midpoint of the strip or the, the other end of the strip. When the strip becomes infinitely thin we just essentially have a line, so distance is just given by the x position or x coordinate of this point. Okay, so we take this limit, and what do we get? Well, the 2k rho is just a constant factor that I took outside the summation sign. The summation sign becomes an integral, and we're integrating from minus l to plus l x squared dx. So when delta x approaches zero, we replace the delta x with dx. Okay, this is a straightforward integral. Integrating x squared gives us a third x cubed. Okay, if we plug in the upper limit l, we get a third l cubed, and I've pulled out the third here, because we're going to get a third in the next, when we use the lower limit, so we're going to get minus uh, third times minus L cubed, well that's just minus L cubed, okay, and these two minuses give us a plus. Um, okay, and I pull out that third. hope this isn't that confusing, it's straightforward actually. Um, we have a 2L cubed here times two thirds, that's four thirds K rho L cubed. Now normally we give a moment of inertia in terms of the entire mass of the object. So we don't want it in terms of the mass per unit area rho. We want to replace rho. But of course to do that we just go back up here. Um, you know, rho is just m over 4 kL, the total mass divided by the total area of the rectangle. Now we're going to consider the moment of inertia of the rectangle about an axis along the side that's in the plane of the rectangle. I call this axis L. So we follow the exact same reasoning as before to get the approximate moment of inertia of the rectangle about axis L. However, the origin of the coordinate system is this point here, so x is measured from here rather than from this axis as before. Okay, so next we take our limits, we let delta x approach zero. So the strip becomes infinitely thin. So now this approximately equals becomes exact equals. The summation becomes an integral sign. The two rho k can be pulled outside. Uh, delta x is replaced with dx. So just the exact same as before, but the limits are different. Okay, so here we're summing over all the strips running from this time 0 to 2L. Okay, so the origin is here, so we're integrating from 0 to 2L. So we plug 2L in here and cube it, that's going to give us 8L cubed times the 2 thirds, uh, 16 thirds. 
rho k times l cubed. And just like before, we write rho in terms of m. So rho is the total mass of the rectangle divided by the area of the rectangle. So this will become a 2. So at last, the moment of inertia about axis L is 4 towards ML squared. Now notice that we expected to get a bigger value than we did for the moment of inertia about the axis through the center of mass. Um, I explained in the previous video, or in the previous video, that the moment of inertia about an axis through the center of mass is the minimum motion of um, moment of inertia. And that makes sense. You can imagine that it's harder to turn this rectangle about axis L than it is about axis C. Greater moment of inertia means greater difficulty of turning. So again we can quickly check that the parallel axis theorem is satisfied. IL is 4 towards M L squared IC is one third M L squared and we multiply the mass by the square of the distance between these two axes. So that distance is L, so it's M L squared and that does check out.